The communications networking landscape is changing and Open RAN is an example of how the industry is evolving. I'm talking today with Colin Bryce. He is Director of Mobile Network Engineering at Comscope about the impact of Open RAN developments on networking and business models. Uh, so Colin, what changes does Open RAN introduce into current business models for telecom infrastructure? Hi, Ray, and uh, thanks for inviting me to, to talk to you today. Um, yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, information, a lot of uh, publicity around Open RAN in, in the last year or so, I would say. And it's definitely an exciting new innovative approach to the delivery of uh, mobile technology. If you think about it really, over the last 20 to 30 years, there's been limited opportunity for real innovation and competition in the mobile network space, particularly in the deployment of, of RAN technology, uh, radio access network technology. Um, roughly every 10 years, we've uh, introduced a new generation of, of technology. So moving from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, and now from 4G on to 5G. And really that's been the only point at which uh, network operators have really been able to go to the market and introduce new, new competition. And once they've chosen a vendor for that particular uh, technology, and, and often they may choose two vendors, but divide a region, a country, for example, into two, into two separate areas and give one area to one vendor, another area to the other vendor. After that point, it's very difficult to introduce competition or additional competition because those, those access networks have been deployed as monolithic technology, meaning a very high integration of hardware and software. And the only way you can, you can replace or update the, 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 the particular supplier is to rip out the technology and get another supplier to invest in that. And that's obviously very expensive. What OpenRAN is going to do is disaggregate the hardware from the software. And large portions of the software will be built on commercial technology. So standard server blades, if you like, standard microprocessors that you, you, you use in data centers or elsewhere. And the application, the, the, the mobile uh, services will be delivered purely in software. The other aspect is really defining protocols in a way that really allows multi-vendors to integrate onto that network. And in both of these, these approaches will allow competition and innovation to take place in, in the network. And I, and I think we, we'll see lots of new players come in, working with the network operators to deliver new concepts, new ideas, startups being given the opportunity to apply something in the network, see if it works, can withdraw it easily if, it, if it's not working well. So that whole startup mentality can now be applied to the RAN network in a way that it's been applied in, in IT networks in the past. Okay. Um, so what kind of role can Open RAN play in enhancing 5G adoption, for example? Well, I think there are two, two aspects to this. I think if, if we think about Open RAN in, in two planes, so the, the, if you like the horizontal plane, which is about uh, opening up the entities, the radio unit, the distributed unit, the central unit, and providing open connections between those. So Open RAN will allow operators to uh, create Standard, standard hardware platforms on which they can deliver services. And this will significantly lower their costs, I believe, and, and allow things like easier integration to uh, multi-access edge computing, because, because effectively there will be many servers on, on a large number of uh, radio access sites. The second aspect, I think, really is in the delivery of new services and the delivery of more intelligence to manage and control the networks. Um, part of the definition of Open RAN is, uh, is, is the, the, the deployment of a technology called, called RIC or um, uh, Radio Access Network Intelligence Controllers. And these are effectively mini computing platforms that will be embedded into the CU and DU with uh, 
open program interfaces. And this will allow, uh, for example, um, software defined network technology to be applied directly into the network with vendors, software vendors, delivering this capability, which in the past has been very, very difficult to do because you really needed to have a, 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 a very deep knowledge of the hardware architecture that you were running these applications on. So I think in terms of the ease of deployment, the integration to services, and, and, and those services are really the exciting part of 5G, if you like. That's what's going to differentiate 5G from, from previous technologies. Okay, so there's a lot of talk about Open RAN at the moment, uh, but but what is the timing of Open RAN deployments? When can it start to impact 5G? Uh, well, that's certainly the the thousand dollar question, I think, at the moment. Um, if if you look at the way Open RAN has evolved, I think the the, the early uh, concept for Open RAN, particularly in as part of the the telecom infra project, was really about creating uh, a community of, of providers who would base a network on standard hardware, particularly with a view to reducing costs of uh, legacy networks for deployment in, uh, in, in, in the developing market. It, it's moved on rapidly to really be picked up by uh, vendors in the developed market as, uh, for all the reasons we've just discussed. So I think we have to, to look at Open RAN in, in two parts, if you like. I think a large number of operators are, are, are currently uh, undergoing trials and, and very early commercial deployment of Open RAN, but this tends to be based on legacy technology, so 3G, 4G technology, with radio units supported up to maybe 44 r so, so, so MIMO, but not massive MIMO and not active uh, antenna units. So, so this, this technology currently can support a, a base level of 4G. And, and w there have been a few announcements uh, that some commercial sites have been deployed with this technology, but no mass rollout yet. But I would expect over uh, the coming year to 18 months, we will begin to see some uh, reasonable rollout of legacy 4G, 3G networks using massive MIMO, perhaps initially in more rural areas, uh, so not to risk, you know, big impact on, on large numbers of customers. But I think once this has been proven in rural areas, it, it will be quite quick to be deployed in other, in other uh, geographical regions, so suburban and urban uh, geographies. I think it's a little bit trickier to say exactly when 5G Open RAN will take place for two reasons, one, one, a, one a technology reason and, and one a commercial reason. I mean, clearly the complexity of 5G networks is quite significantly uh, higher than 4G, particularly where we're, we're looking at uh, much larger bandwidths, different numerologies, uh, different coding schemes. Uh, we're also looking at the use of massive MIMO technology and a much, a much greater impact across the network. And perhaps also the need to implement dynamic spectrum sharing to allow a, a broader geographical coverage of 5G. All of these features, I think, will take a little bit longer uh, to, to, to get ready in the open RAN uh, ecosystem. So I suspect 5G is probably a, a minimum of two years away in, in, in my view. Um, but but it but it's happening quickly. So I'd say certainly by you know 2025, I, I, I would expect to see reasonable high density of deployment in a number of networks. Okay, excellent. So in, in terms of Open RAN, what are the key considerations right now for Comscope's telco customers? I think. Um, it, it really falls into uh, into three parts. Um, I think they, they, they need to feel comfortable that uh, the standards are written in such a way that integration is, is relatively easy to achieve. So they really can take kit, take network entities from different vendors at a hardware level, at a software level, and they can integrate these together across the defined protocols. A lot of good work's being done in this area through the Open RAN Alliance and, and, and the Telecom Infra Partnership. Um, and I think that that will, will come quite quickly. 
The second portion is really how you integrate these features, how you how comfortable you are that you can deploy new software onto the Open RAN networks. And so the, 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 the operators are going to have to decide how they want to manage that integration. Today, the, the, the large proprietary OEMs do a lot of integration, just simple things like uh, ensuring the environmental capability of a cabinet that you're deploying outdoor works. So heat management, uh, air conditioning, uh, IP grading for, for uh, weatherproofing, for example, all of those things have to be have to be done by somebody. Is that going to be done by the operator themselves? Are they going to design the complete solution? Are they going to hand that out to network integrators? Are they going to rely on these small companies to do a lot of this type of work themselves? So I think those questions remain to be answered in detail. And, and then how much the operators are willing to reinvest in engineering to undertake these types of activities how much they'll outsource those to some form of network integrator, or how much they're going to rely on the manufacturing community to deliver complete solutions across each of the network entities. So I think those are big questions which are still being worked in the in the operator community. And then finally, we've seen obviously Rakuten and, and, and Dish, for example, in the United States, very bullish about deploying open RAN technology. But these are these are greenfield networks. I think the challenge always for a for a legacy operator is how do you deploy this new technology on top of your existing infrastructure without impacting the services that you're delivering today to a large number of uh, of paying customers. So I think those are the challenges that the uh, the, the the network operators will face in deploying OpenRAN. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, what is Comscope bringing to the open RAN market? Well, traditionally in in the RAN space, Comscope have have had two sort of slightly differentiated businesses um, for outdoor uh, micro networks. So, the public uh, the public space of mobile, if you like, um, we really are an infrastructure company. Uh, we, we deploy everything in a site apart from the radio units themselves, which would, would traditionally come from uh, one of the proprietary OEM vendors. And, and as far as most of that technology is impacted by Open RAN, um, we will continue to deploy the type of technology that, that, that allows a cell site to be deployed in, a, in an efficient and cost-effective way. So again, if, if you think about it, um, you know, may, many operators are deploying multiple bands today on a cell site, maybe eight or nine bands, multiple technologies, 2G through 3G, more kits going on to the tower. Uh, the, the towers are being, are being loaded uh, with, and also more power requirements. We're putting more electronics on the top of a mast. All of these things still have to be considered. And, and, and we're providing technology that, that allows operators to do this in a very effective way, not deploying more boxes, not deploying boxes of a reasonable size so they can still get zoning or planning permission to deploy. And we're working closely with a number of RU vendors to, to introduce them to innovative technology that allows them to do this. Um, so for example, we're one of the pioneers of what we're calling interleave technology. And this allows uh, higher band radios to, to transmit through an antenna that's serving the low bands, allowing, for example, a massive MIMO uh, radio to be deployed in the same antenna under the same radome as traditional low bands, 900, 800, with the same gain on those antennas. So you can deploy one, one antenna that will allow you to put a 5G radio massive MIMO radio on a site, but still serve all your traditional bands and users with, with the legacy technology. And I think those types of technologies are going to make it easy for operators to, to, to roll out 5G onto their current cell site. The other area that Comscope's involved in are, are what I would classify as specialist coverage uh, type technology. So indoor DAS distributed antenna solutions indoor small cell solutions, campus and venue solutions. And, and we'll continue to uh, 
upgrade our solutions for these types of applications to support open open RAN uh, capability. And, and we think this is going to be very useful, for example, in the neutral host market. Operators don't always want to fully invest in a specialist coverage area, for example, a, a large airport or a shopping mall or a big office block. And now neutral hosts are the ones that are actually buying the hardware and delivering a capability that can support multiple operators. And we think this is going to be much, much easier in future using disaggregated technology that will come with OpenRAN. So we'll continue investing heavily in, in those two areas. Okay. And in what other ways can Comscope help to shape the OpenRAN market in the coming years? Well, we have been uh, very supportive of the uh, the various fora forums that are, are are supporting the development of Open RAN, and I'm thinking things like the Open RAN Alliance, the Telecom Infra Project, and the um, Open RAN uh, Policy Coalition, which is helping to create the the right business environment for Open RAN to flourish. And we will certainly continue to take part in those uh, um, activities and continue to contribute. Uh, where appropriate and where we have the expertise to do so. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we, we, we also uh, are embracing the whole uh, approach to Open RAN. So again, this is not about Comscope building proprietary solutions. It's about us taking the technology in which we're experts and going to the market, engaging with partners, working with them to develop appropriate solutions and, 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 and create those on, on an open basis. And again, we'll continue to do that. And we have some innovative concepts that we're bringing to the whole idea of a, a, an, an, an active antenna unit uh, that we are currently talking to a number of uh, radio vendors about. Um, We'll continue to develop the hardened solutions that I mentioned. So we have a cabinet business. That cabinet business will support the deployment of multi-axis edge computing and, and uh, open RAN servers at cell sites. Um, there will be a need for specialist, uh, specialized coverage solutions, for example, smaller cells, um, camouflage cell sites to be able to deploy RAN deeper and embed it um, closer to customers and we'll continue to, de to, to, to develop technology for these types of applications. Um, and then finally, I think, uh, you know, anytime you deploy a cell site of any type, you need to think about the front hall access uh, or, or the access technology to, to deliver services to that site. And you need to think about an efficient way of delivering power to that site. And, and those are another two areas in which Comscope are investing heavily um, and, and will continue to offer those uh, services and that technology to the Open RAN community. Okay, well, I mean, it's an incredibly exciting part of the industry and very fast moving. So, Colin, thanks for sharing Comscope's view of Open RAN with us today. Thank you. Thanks. It's been a pleasure.